Vale. Okay, so we will continue uh, talking about future and Mediterranean uh, with the point of view, our students of the course of uh, the seminar Medways uh, of Professor Sheridan, coordinated by my colleague, Ricardo, um, uh, Alisa Dish, I'm sorry. <laughs> and so I'm going to invite uh, the first group that will present. Um, Juan, Melanie, and Vanessa from Sevilla, Sevilla uh, as area of analysis. Vanessa? You so, um, this semester we explored and researched Sevilla, which is the capital of Andalusia for existing and potential circular economies. Um, it is located at the Guadalquivir River, and it has an inland port that plays an important role for its economy. Um, furthermore, we also looked at um, surrounding towns and villages of Sevilla, um, and we quickly noticed that they all have a really great connection um, to Sevilla. They all have a main road leading to it, but they barely have any connection um, in between each other. And so they have a hard time um, um, uh, using their strengths to um, support each other, which is why we developed our concept. So our concept is um, that we want to have a pavilion which travels along the Guadalquivir and then is transported to the different villages. Um, it will arrive at the shore, shores and it's an orange cycle and then it will have a temporary event at the villages. And then when it leaves, it will take some information from the villages with it to the other ones. And in the end, we will stop at the um, port of Sevilla and have a huge um, exhibition. Good. Uh, one of the like, we wanted to try to make four zooms, like an example uh, of how could, could the pavilion work. Uh, the first zoom we made in Torre de la Reina, which is also an agricultural town. Um, it already has an art uh, an art project that comes and makes a street art for a week in the city, and then uh, they have this uh, kind of library of art which they gather out of the event, and they also have a like. They are also built around a castle, which provides us with the perfect space, a uh, kind of open courtyard that we could use. And it's also in the center of the of the town. Um, another interesting place is La Rinconada, which is a cultural and industrial center. Um, it has an interesting company that we found called Herba Rice Mill that produces innovative products out of rice and, and herb waste. And um, we found an empty store um, uh, at the place where also the cultural center of La Rinconada is. And we wanted to implement a new store there to display and sell this innovative rice and herb products. The next uh, town that we um, zoomed on is Puebla de Alhadrafe, <laughs> and um, it has a rich history and a big agriculture sector um, in the nat na uh, natural olive production. And we displayed some of their products here, and the big company is Bramoliva. And uh, we want to um, implement that in our um, information uh, in the pavilion and then we also pointed out this um, place Plaza de Espana um, which we thought could be a nice place for it because uh, it's also connected to the main road throughout the city. And at last we also have uh, La Agaba um, which is um, famous for its many orange plantations and its rich history and um, our inter intervention is supposed to take place at the Torre de los Guzmanes which is an old tower where now there's an information center where they display also the history um, of La Agaba in an exhibition. And they regularly have sightseeing tours for tours where they show the history and also um, specialities, like for example, the spread we can see in this picture here of La Agaba. And we wanted to connect to that and also um, add the orange component and show the people more about the orange plantations and also um, interesting um, innovative products that can emerge from oranges, for example, and um, flower out of orange peels. Next, we want to show you our pavilion, our project. Um, so the program we want to implement is um, we have workshops, which um, will be based around this uh, so, uh, economic um, innovations. And then we want to have events and also have a art exhibition, which we talked about before. And the first Zoom in Huawei de Al-Harafe, which we um, zoomed in, are zoomed in now, um, is in this place um, here in uh, Plaza de España, and we want to have a store which will stay there, and that will be um, maybe a shop or also take information for the people um, about the natural, natural olive, um, yeah, <laughs> agriculture sector. So then the pavilion will come and they will uh, interact and have a huge um, event. So.
In Niagara, and this part of the arrive in a place that buys a tower where we want to have our intervention. And when it arrives, it can connect to this um, orange component and display and sell um, these orange products or also um, have workshops where people can, for example, learn how um, orange flower is, for example, made. Uh, in the Rail Arena, we wanted to place it in the, in the central courtyard of the main castle in the center of the city. Uh, because uh, first it has visual studio plantations, it's in the center, all the cities built around it, and it provides like kind of a cool uh, idea of connecting with the history and the art that we're bringing to the place. Uh, in Lavan Colada, the pavilion can arrive at a place in between the culture center and the new uh, rice products that we want to implement, and so it can on one hand um, connect to the cultural part of Lavan Colada, and on the other hand also to the industrial part of these new rice products. Um, okay, and for the pavilion, we took inspiration for the form in uh, Alpardon, which is the um, uh, decorative element of the Mudejar architecture. We were thinking that it should be just a shadow element that allows the pedestrian to walk through. Um, we also uh, uh, think that it should be art, an art structure um, in order to take advantage like, of this art architecture that they have in the Mudejar. And we also were thinking that this art could be a, kind of a module that uh, can be built on or taken out anytime. And we were thinking also about using uh, either olives or oranges wood to make it like to keep it local with all the materials and the construction. And uh, that's kind of all if you have questions. I don't know if it's now the time for questions or later. Uh, we keep the question for lecture. And so many thanks. And so I'm going to introduce the second group, and um, groups of Bari. So we go to Italy, and I invite Nicolo, Tamas, and Jan. Hello. Yeah. Okay. And um, Tamas and, and Nicolo are there. Here. Um, I'm presenting on my own today. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So share the screen and so. Okay. Okay, um, we would like to take you to Bari in the southeast of Italy and um, yeah, try to um, explain what our concept is so far. Um, we did some analysis of um, the Terra di Bari. So we have Bari here in the east of this region and then um, um, discovered a beautiful line of um, cities along the coast, a second line of cities in the inland and then in the south of the region, there's the Alta Murgia National Park. So with these three regions in mind, um, we looked at existing and applicable, also non-existent uh, um, points for the circular economy in these places. So when we looked at the sea, we um, found ways or um, companies that um, used the waste of fish, for example, the eyeballs or other parts to um, in biochemical um, processes um, reduce and change them to new materials which could be used um, for fishing nets but also for creative industry standards like um, um, contact lenses or even um, bathing suits for example. So um, this would be this circle here um, our idea was to have um, all these fisher ports connected by a train line to have a new biochemical plant which collects all these uh, fish wastes and uh, turns them into new materials. And then finally in Bari um, have the creative district where all those new materials could be used to, um, yeah, to form new processes. And in the midline of the country, there's um, many olive fields or primarily, primarily olive fields so far. So we looked of, uh, looked at what to do with those olives. And um, in the production of olive oil, for example, there's a lot of waste uh, with the pulp and also the cores. And um, there's companies that um, can degrade those um, to um, new materials as well, which can be used for um, new seeds and fertilizer, but also for example, for toys. And so similar to the fish waste, um, there would be a new system of um, those olive herbs that would be collected and recomposed and 
in the end in Bari be fabricated to new products. And uh, another point that we're looking at was the Altamirana sheep in the national park that is really close to extinction. And so we would like to further implement our ideas to um, save these sheep from extinction. And in the end, if there are small sheep, um, um, start new economical circles. Um, to strengthen our concept, we would like to connect those three factors, uh, those three um, ideas, by new means of transportation and, and soft tourism. So um, we looked at one region of the, or one sub-region of the region, which would be the Bitonto area, and um, looked at what infrastructure there already is and um, what would be potentials to add. So we found some um, train lines that mostly go parallel to the coast and also streets and thought of um, connecting them vertically to the ocean so that there would be new connections um, for both the inhabitants of the region and the tourists. And um, yes, here you can see for each of the sub-regions that we have um, specific points of interest, for example, from a tourist point of view. And um, just to have a close, uh, a short glimpse into what we are going to do next. And um, there's, uh, for example, our region at the coast, we have the town of Giovinazzo. And um, here you can see the existing and also sometimes new bike lanes, which we would like to emphasize, also the train connection. And then we look into the harbor and look what there is already and um, try to implement our idea of the um, biochemical um, production and collection of fish waste. Um, to um, discuss and also transport our ideas, we would like to, um, or we started developing a graphical novel or a little comic, um, however you want to call it, and to yeah, show a narrative of how these changes could both affect the infrastructure in a soft way, but also the lives of the people in the area that are living and working there. Thank you very much. Many thanks, Jan, for this uh, nice presentation of your uh, group, of your um, yeah, of the Bari case. And so I'm going to invite the last group, uh, Catania, with Gülce and Sara. Hello. Hello. When you want, you can share your uh -huh. presentation. Sara will share the screen, and I will wait for a minute. We can see it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yes, uh, I will try to be very fast. So our study area is in Catania. Uh, it's the capital of the metropolitan city of Catania and it's in Sicily Island. That is one of the 20 regions of Italy. Uh, in the maps, uh, we can see our study area. Uh, we wanted to include both the Etna mountain, uh, which is one of the tallest active mountains in the Europe and also the Simeto River Basin as a yellow area on the left side. Uh, so both of them have a significant role in fertility of the area. And as a result, agriculture is quite important for local culture and economy. And in these three maps, uh, again on the left side, we can see production areas for pistachio, wine and citrus, which are dominant agricultural products of the area. Uh, also, there are a lot of associations and some innovative companies on the right map. Uh, we have also meserias that are actually local farmhouses. And on the map, we can see what they are being used for today uh, with different colors for accommodation, museum, holiday farm, even space or restaurants. Uh, so to sum up this first page, uh, we have some local values. Uh, and we want to bring together in a circular system to protect their value and make them support each other to even improve what is already existing. Um, so next, please. Okay, in this graphic, um, around the Etna Mountain, we have Etna Railway, and we can see the railway as a black continuous line in the graphic uh, on the left side. Uh, and the settlements with train stations uh, with red dots. We can also see dominant agricultural products on these settlements and underground, above ground situation of the railway uh, in the inner circles of the graphic. 
So with all those information, uh, we wanted to use this railway as a physical connection and we chose Bronte, Santa Maria de Licodia and Giare uh, as three settlements with different agricultural products, some important associations and materials with different uses uh, in order to have variety in our circular scenarios and Sarah will continue with these scenarios. Um, on the right side, you can see um, the, where the settlements are located that we selected. We have Giara at the coast, Santa Maria de Coria right in the middle, and Bronte um, very closely to the Mount Etna. Um, in our project, we would like to introduce a kind of a bioeconomical uh, system that includes different components that are um, agritourism, innovation in the social, but also in um, economical sense and as well as circular economy in its own way. And we have different aspects and our aims that um, play a role in the circle and we would like to develop and include in our next steps. And um, we would like to show one example, which is Santa Maria de la Curia. Um, you can see it here. Um, as Gertrude already said, we chose for each settlement um, two masterias and either an association or an innovative company. And for all of them, we would like to introduce somehow a circular system that in a way they could work together and profit from each other. And in Santa Maria de Licuria, we chose the association located directly in the city, um, Cultura e Progreso, the masteria um, Fontana de Chirovino. Um, it's located here, and as a second Masseria Lagora, which is a um, social farm and located here. Um, we would like to propose an idea of how they could work together and what could each of them do to um, yeah, provide a way to help in the circle. Um, we have a look on Cultura e Progreso. We um, propose that they um, have temporary markets and cultural events to increase the awareness and knowledge of visitors and inhabitants for um, sustainable ecosystems and as well support uh, the local farmers around them. Um, the circle goes in two ways as they are supporting each other in yeah, every direction somehow. Um, in the Masseria Lagora, we would like to introduce a youth center that um, could be promoted from the Cultura e Progreso, where um, they can be part in the farm work and learn how to cultivate crops in the regional circumstances. And in the next step could be included in the cooking class that we approach for in the second Masteria, Montana del Cherubio, where uh, visitors can learn how to prepare traditional dishes with local and farm-owned products. And to close the circle, all these products um, that are produced can be um, so sold at the market and uh, promoted at the cultural events. Um, in the three last maps, we would like to show where we um, could imagine to place um, the ideas we have. So we have directly in the city, just to the Cultura um, Progreso market, and as well, um, the summer kitchen in the Fontana de Cherubino and a new youth center at the Lagora farm. Yeah. Okay, many thanks. Uh, many thanks, Sara and Gülce. And so I want to ask uh, to Mose to um, give us your first uh, feedback for our students. And then I will open a bit uh, the questions uh, also to the other um, lecturer and uh, people from the audience. And we can't hear you. The microphone is off. Okay, I was very curious to hear about this uh, medways uh, that they prepared and I'm very honored to, uh, from their presentation, thank you very much guys uh, for, uh, they're all interesting and uh, very stimulating. And uh, I appreciate it. Uh, I think that all the three uh, proposals touched um, interesting uh, topics. 
uh, of the circular economies in the territory, yeah, of course. Uh, uh, the first one um, arrived to the definition of uh, public space structures that are also very important in all the Mediterranean country. And, uh, and this uh, idea to, to develop a linear system that focuses on uh, some notes, the same idea probably is uh, in um, the other two proposal and in the Puglia one and also in the Catania. Uh, oh, my, if I, uh, I mean, my, my only doubt, I mean, my only curiosity, not doubt, uh, because um, the, the narrative is fantastic. You know, how those territories in, in such a way already work and how can they work better? But uh, I would uh, uh, ask to you all, what kind of uh, design device do you imagine beyond the, 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 the schemes, the, 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 the sketches, uh, the, the, the ideal projects? But how, you, how can you imagine to convince the people to use the territories in this way through architectural or uh, urban planning devices. Because this is a, an old history for our disciplines, no? that we uh, plan how people should, do, should make to achieve the, some objectives, but then in the end, uh, nobody do that. Uh, and so you have to consider this option, but nobody will do what you plan, but they, maybe they can use those territories in different ways. So one way could be to design or, um, or use some design devices that can be used in the way you see, you say, but also that can um, uh, have other purposes. And this is very easy. Uh, for example, in, in the case of a square with the pavilions uh, uh, and so on, because in any case, you need the shadow, you need places where to encounter the other people. Uh, um, but did, did you think about this? I mean, how do you imagine to force people to behave that way? Emphas emphasizing the... the, the uh, can I answer the question? Oh, of course. Um, okay, so we were actually thinking that, um, like, to involve the the complete community in the process of making the pavilion. So uh, that's also why we uh, keep like uh, kind of open ideas with the. Uh, uh, wait, sorry, uh, I I wasn't able to start. Might be something wrong there. Well, let me hear you. Sorry. Well, good. <clears throat> okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, so we wanted to involve the communities in the in the design of the pavilion, and we also wanted to uh, like make an event out of it. So it's basically like what is happening already in Torre de la Reina in some of these uh, towns where the event is not just a cultural experience, but it's kind of a party where the people go and uh, kind of take appropriation of the of the pavilion. So basically, yeah, our idea is that. Uh, like we try not to go too deep into the design, uh, but rather kind of um, make a process of, I don't know, like all the time changing pavilion and a, a pavilion that the people really like take and do whatever they want with it. It's kind of super optimistic, but that's how we imagine it. <laughs> Are there, are there other statements? What, what from the Bari group? What do you think, Jan? Yeah, um, that is a really good question because um, that is something that we also have in our heads all the time. Like um, we're planning from here. We've never sadly even been there before. So um, we would, um, we're really curious as to um, how our ideas could be implemented. And also, of course, this is also very abstract, but um, I like the ideas already um, to use um, multi-purpose design, for example, that can be used for this idea, but doesn't have to. So 
yeah, that should be one further question that we need to think about, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, maybe if I can say, sorry, oh no, first maybe the Catania group <laughs> for some. Um, yeah, as um, I think in our research, we also discovered that this is already a problem as um, our system um, programs have sometimes trouble to be recognized in a right way. But I think um, also a visibility of um, the topics and the communication of these can help to yeah, increase the awareness and knowledge for the inhabitants and also visitors and yeah, spread this theme a little more than maybe now is. Yeah, well, thank you so much for, for all these presentations today for the three groups. I think that was really a nice, I, well, nice for you to present it here and a nice input for the conference, I hope. And, and I think just um, the comments were just perfect because after this long like trip that we had through all the different scales from very close to very uh, territorial and, and even like these Mediterranean scale with the exchange of the three places, I think it's now a very good idea yeah, recommendation to go back to the architecture to to actually think about the potential of the places and, and what it could be because I felt we discussed it also a bit and I, I think it's a very good idea to continue working there now. Yeah. Are there other comments, questions for our students? Okay. <laughs>